thank you very much to Alid for last week's lengthy but awesome video on the incarnation. So nice to hear uh, Christmas music in August, genuinely. Um, this week is a shorter one by comparison. We're teasing some doctrines that we'll talk about more over the next couple of weeks and months. Uh, this week specifically we're looking at the virgin birth, which is <clears throat> the common name for the biblical truth that Jesus was conceived supernaturally by the Holy Spirit in Mary's womb. No human father involved, though of course Joseph did raise Jesus as his son uh, once God had explained things to him. So in other words, a miracle, a very clear act of God. And the virgin birth is taught in scripture uh, and it's a doctrine that the church has believed since the beginning uh, with, as usual, there have been some dissenters because you can't get rid of them, can you? But does it matter, the virgin birth? Um, some people in the church today will deny this doctrine. Um, does it really make a difference? After all, Jesus was born so does it matter how he was born? Well, the answer is yes, it does matter. The virgin birth matters an awful lot, uh, more than I have time to go into today. So I'm just going to suggest a few reasons why it's important. Um, but first, we'll see what the Bible says about it and we'll pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the virgin birth. Thank you uh, for the birth of your son who was fully human and fully divine, that we'll hear more about next week. Thank you that you, by the power of the Holy Spirit, created a human baby in Mary's womb, and that baby would be our salvation. Thank you for your initiative in bringing forth the Redeemer. And thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, let me just get the passage. Um, quicker to get on here we're in Matthew 1 18 to 25 and we're just going to read Matthew's account Luke writes um, about this as well but we're going to read Matthew's version Matthew 1 18 this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about his mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph but before they came together she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit because Joseph her husband was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Now, I think Matthew's very clear. I'm going to read that again. I'm going to emphasise the bits where he draws our attention to the fact that this isn't a normal conception. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. Mary pledged to Joseph, but before they came together, she's pregnant. Not so bad these days, but in those days, social rejection, shock and horror. Joseph obviously knows it's not his because he plans to divorce her quietly to avoid too much shame. God appears to Joseph then and, and says, what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So Joseph sticks around. Matthew continues, all this happened to fulfill the Old Testament scriptures that the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And finally, Matthew ends on a note that Joseph did not consummate their marriage until Mary gave birth. Implying that he did after. Um, Matthew really wants us to know, doesn't he, that Joseph was not the dad. In fact, there was no human dad. The baby in Mary's womb was from the Holy Spirit. 
Uh, and this wasn't actually a surprise if you knew your scriptures, because God had promised in the Old Testament, in Isaiah, that the virgin would be with child and would give birth. Matthew is very clear on this. Virgin birth. And you can read it in Luke's account as well if you want to. <clears throat> he goes into more detail. Ma uh, Mary actually asks the question, well, how can this happen? I'm a virgin. Uh, and she's told it will be the power of the Holy Spirit. So a miracle, a clear miracle right there in the Bible. And actually, if you believe in the God that the Bible tells us about, it's not actually that hard to believe compared to last week with the Incarnation. What is more stretching on your mind, the Incarnation or the Virgin birth? The truth that God himself took on human flesh and walked among us without ever ceasing to be God? Or the fact that God made a baby in Mary's womb without the help of a human father? Surely the creator God who spoke the universe into being could accomplish such a, a small task as that. So it's not that hard to believe if we believe in God. But why? Why would God do this? Well, here are a few thoughts. One reason the virgin birth is so important is because it points to Jesus's identity as the Messiah. Uh, the Jews were looking for a sign that the Christ was coming, weren't they? Uh, uh, so fulfilling the prophecy from Isaiah that the virgin will conceive and bear a son, that was a good start. <laughs> If Jesus hadn't been born of a virgin, then his birth, his normal birth, would have put a big red X in the is he a messiah box. Uh, and that would be no good, would it? So the virgin birth, great start, points to Jesus as the coming messiah. Another reason it's important is that ever since Adam, uh, Paul writes in Romans, that mankind has been born in sin. In Adam's image if you like, bearing the marks of his failure uh, and blinded to the things of God. The Bible's also very clear on that. And David writes in the Psalms that he was sinful from the moment he was conceived. By bypassing Joseph and creating a, a, a baby in Mary's womb by the Holy Spirit, God is very obviously declaring that this is not just another sinful son of Adam. Uh, this is the son of God. <laughs> And indeed, that's what he's called, obviously. And the Bible does present Jesus as a kind of new Adam, a final Adam, to get things right where Adam got them wrong. The start of a new humanity, a fresh start. Um, sinless. Because he doesn't follow in Adam's line. But we'll hear more about that uh, in a couple of weeks, I think. Virgin birth shows us also that humanity needs redeeming and the redeemer is not going to come from us. God must act. God must intervene to bring redemption. Our sin and our guilt are so profound that the saviour must come from outside, from elsewhere. It must be God himself. And it shows us God's initiative in salvation. He didn't send an angel down to canvas the women in the local area and ask who wanted to bear the Christ. God chose Mary. She was favoured by him, we're told. Uh, and she became the mother of the Messiah. And as she sang for herself, from now on, all women will call me blessed. So God acted to save his people and he did not wait to ask our permission. If he had waited, he'd still be waiting. Finally, the virgin birth, and there's obviously loads more we could say, but I'm coming up to 10 minutes. It hints at something that we'll hear about next week. That the, the fully human and fully divine natures united in the one person of Jesus. Here's a quote I found online on the Desiring God blog post. God, in his wisdom, ordained a combination of human and divine influence in the birth of Christ. So that his full humanity would be evident to us from the fact that his ordinary human birth from a human mother. And his full deity would be evident from the fact of his conception in Mary's womb by the powerful work of the Holy Spirit. So hints of what's to come in Jesus's life. So the virgin birth clearly taught in the Bible uh, something for us to believe and rejoice in because it points to Jesus as the Messiah, the fulfillment of scripture. Uh, and it reminds us that salvation is all from God. See you next week.